All right, guys, it's right before season one, and we have a crackling ball lightning uh, shock build for the sorcerer that you guys can use inside of season one. It's not only really good in the end game, but it's very, very efficient for speed farming nightmare dungeons at anything roughly like 47 and below. You can speed right through it, and to me, it's very, very satisfying just to see all the damage numbers and basically lag out the game so bad that you could just break it. So today we're going to go over everything that you guys need for the build, how to play it, and the Paragon board. So let's break that stuff down. So into the skill tree, what you're going to be looking at doing is grabbing Firebolt and then Arc Lash. If you are choosing to try to use uh, Ball Lightning as a leveling build, which I recommend that you don't, you're going to have to use Arc Lash, okay? Now I do want to preface at the very start of this is that this build is heavenly reliant on having remnants, okay? Now, if you don't have remnants, then it's fine. You can do it without it, but it's not going to be as efficient and the build isn't going to be as smooth. So I'm going to recommend that you do have this when you put this build together. Now, uh, we're going to when we get to the gear pieces, I will go over Isus because there are some other options, but I really do like Isus here. But again, you're going to need two points just to advance because we're not only using a basic, but we're also not using a core skill. Uh, so we have Fireball and Arc Lash just to get the two points down into our core skills. We're going to be taking Chain Lightning up into Destructive Chain Lightning. I'll get to this. I know I said I'm not using a core skill, but I'll get to why we have points into this later. Two points into Devastation to go into three points of Elemental Dominance. Our core and master skills deal 9% increased manage, um, uh, damage when they're cast above 50 mana. We have 168 mana in this build, so we're always going to be casting above 50, and our damage is always going to be stacked. Uh, after that, we're going to come down, and of course, just like every other Sorcerer build in the game, we are going to be using all four of our defensive skills. We're taking uh, Flame Shield into Mystical Flame Shield for the mana cost reduction. However, if you do feel like you are really squishy, even with this post-patch update and taking a lot of damage, you can do Shimmering to heal for 50% of your missing life. It's actually really, really good. However, I like the mana cost reduction because I love to spam Ball Lightning. Then we are taking Teleport. You want to max this out. This is key. Okay, you really, really need to max out Teleport to reduce that cooldown so that way we can Teleport nonstop. Into Shimmering Teleports to get some more damage reduction. Then, of course, Ice Armor with uh, Enhanced Ice Armor for Mana Regen. And then you max out Frost Nova into Mystical Frost Nova for the vulnerability, also maxing this for the cooldown. However, if you didn't want to max this, there is some other points that you guys can do. You could take the points out and put them into Permafrost, into Hoarfrost, which we will showcase for you guys in this build just so you guys can see the difference here. Point into there and max that. However, the build, if you want to max the points out in here, it works very, very efficiently even with that. Then, of course, three points into Elemental Attunement. On a lucky hit chance, we reset one of our defensive skills. Very important. Three points into Glass Cannon here uh, to get more and more damage. You do take more damage. However, you do, you dish out so much damage. And you have so much crowd control between freezing and stunning. We don't necessarily care about the 9% damage that we're going to take, even with the, uh, the nerf with the uh, patch uh, yesterday. Down to our Conjuration skills, we're taking none. But we are taking Precision Magic for Lucky Hit Chance Increase. And then we're taking Align the Elements into Mana Shield and Protection. Not only for a barrier, but for more mana shield so we can be a little bit more tanky. <clears throat> However, if you do want to, uh, because of our uh, unstable currents, if you do want to point a point into this, you can. Otherwise, it's not a big deal. Uh, we're going to come down and we're going to grab mastery skills. We're not taking any mastery skills except for the main one, ball lightning. Max out ball lightning into wizard's ball lightning. If the enemy hits four times, it creates a crackling energy, which is very, very important to our build. We're not doing damage with Crackling Energy, but we need it to replenish our mana as well as to help reset our cooldowns of our Teleport and our Unstable um, uh, Currents. Then we're taking one point into Static Discharge, three points into Invigorating Conduit. Uh, this is what's going to help keep our mana up when we absorb Crackling Energy. You see I have three points here into Shocking Impact. This is from my Amulet. This isn't necessary for the build whatsoever. But you do do additional damage to them when you stun them, which is going to happen when we teleport in from Remnants. However, this is not necessary. Then we're going to come down one point into Permafrost and then Hoarfrost. 
Because while we freeze them and chill them, we're not really chilling them. We're only freezing them, really. So we're doing 18 times increased damage when we freeze with Frost Nova. Very, very important. And then Unstable Currents just to Prime. We don't need the extra here because Cracking Energy continues to pulse and consumes no charges. We don't necessarily care about that. We're going to kill everything anyway, so we just need the increased attack speed. Uh, and then for our key passive, we are doing Overflow Energy. Overflowing Energy. Cracking Energy hits an additional time. And then when it hits, our shock skill cooldowns are reduced. This is mainly for teleport, but when we pop unstable currents, this is going to help reset this, okay? Uh, if you don't want that and you want to deal some more damage initially and not reset uh, teleport, you can take Veer's Mastery for just the increased 10% damage from shock skills and then the damage reduction. Okay, both of these are really, really good. However, I find that overflowing energy just makes the build flow more and it's easier to play with it. Okay, let's get into our gear pieces and the choices that we have. I know that I, it shows that I have a low attack power here, but that's okay. In our helmet, we have Frost Blitz to get a second charge of Frost Nova. Nova at an increased cooldown. Then, of course, Remnants. Then we're taking Exploiters. I've been testing this, and this seems really good because when monsters are unstoppable and we can't crowd control them with stun or freeze, this build doesn't do a whole lot of damage. A lot of our damage comes from freezing and stunning them. So this really helps against those monsters, even bosses, which is really, really good. So I really like it. Uh, disobedience, of course, even though with the nerf. And then here goes one controversial one that I really like. So Isus is going to give us increased move speed. But more importantly, we're going to have the crit strike chance increase based on our movement speed. So I have a movement speed of 117%. This can be a lot higher. I'm looking for a better amulet to give me move speed. And once I get my move speed to 150%, it'll be better. But I gain 24% of this movement speed percentage, which is roughly 28% increased crit chance, which is really, really good because we want to do a crap ton of damage with this build. However, you, this is not required. You can always swap it out. These are the boots that I was using before. These boots are almost perfect. The increase to teleport ranks and frost over ranks is very, very important. The mana reduction is cool. If these boots replaced decks and had the movement speed, then I would still probably use these. But you can definitely do this instead of Isus. However, the crit chance increase makes this build uh, do a lot more damage. But, you know, it just kind of depends on what you're up to. Uh, after that, we have uh, Gravitational, which Ball Lightning orbits around us and does less damage. Then in our Amulet of Control, which I need a better one, I need a Ancestral, we have Control to deal damage when they're immobilized or stunned. Again, this uh, helps with Exploiters. Um, and then we have Progeny for when we use a cooldown, we get Mana Reduction back. And then Retribution, when we stun somebody, we do increased damage. In our Offhand, we are doing uh, Conceited, so that way whenever we have a Barrier, which is always, we do increased damage. Now, let's go ahead and showcase the build just a little bit, guys, so you guys can see a little bit more of it. And I want to take down the boss here so you guys can see how powerful uh, the build really is. The build plays pretty simple. You, pat, you pop one um, ball lightning, you teleport in, cast your Frost Nova, and then just let it rip, okay? You can pop Unstable Currency to reset everything or help reset everything, and then everything just dies on the screen. It's very, very good. Oh, cool. We got a Legendary. Go ahead and pop pants. Awesome. Stuff I don't need. You want to make sure that you're moving around and non-stop casting your ball lightning. Now, again, this was with the permafrost. You don't necessarily need this. To me, I'd rather have the increased cooldown and frost with uh, having the maxed out points inside of Frost Nova. So now you guys will be able to see this. Uh, we're going to go down and kill this, and then we're going to kill the boss. So, again, we're just going to pop one of these. We're going to teleport in, freeze, pop your shield, and then everything pretty much dies. It's pretty good. Now, we're going to skip over and fight the boss so you guys can see it. So, I'll see you guys at that point. Okay, now let's go defeat the boss and see how well this build does against a boss at Nightmare Dungeon 42. Let's see how we do. You get some really, really good CC. Pop your unstable currents. Always teleport. The build is actually is not too bad. See, I lost her for a second. Oh, I guess to get our mana back. Teleport in, Frost Nova. I'm stuck. 
and then she's dead. The build is really, really cool. Very, very fun. Ice armor, ice shards pierce, and then two other items that I don't need because they're sacred. Get these things out of my inventory. All right, we're gonna go ahead and increase electrocute or exploiter. Both of those are really, really good. Okay, now onto the Paragon board, which I know a lot of you guys want to see. So this Paragon board has been worked on three times and we've changed it multiple times, but so far this seems to be what works the most consistent. Um, so starting first board, we're coming up, we're taking Elementalist uh, for non-physical damage and max life. And then our first one is Territorial. We're always gonna be up close and personal. So make sure that you have this. We're always going to be up close. And then we take uh, Elemental Balance. One thing I do want to mention about the Lightning Balls, thank you to my chat, is that any wallers that you guys come across or going through a door is going to drop your ball lightnings off. So just keep that in mind when you're fighting enemies. Into our second board, we're taking Elemental Summoner. We're not actually taking the Legendary Node. But we're going to come up and grab Swift Conjurer for attack speed. Reservoir for maximum mana and life. We're grabbing Conjurer for Conjuration skill damage and Mastery skill damage. Our Glyph is going to be Adept for Mastery skill damage. You don't necessarily benefit from the 20% increased area, but the Mastery skill damage is very important. Then we're taking uh, Arude, Arudite. I think I said that wrong. You guys are going to butcher me in the comments. But uh, more Mastery skill damage. Um, into board three, we're going to come over and take fidget fate we're not actually taking this because we don't care about our lucky hit chance necessarily but we're going to come in and grab weakness for more vulnerable damage uh chilling for more intelligence uh and then electrocute is going to be our glyph for increased critical strike chance um then we're grabbing vulnerable damage from oppressive and then the matching nodes around it our next board that we're going to come up and grab is going to be uh, Static Surge. Stunning Enemies restores mana. This is really, really good, especially if you have mana issues. Then we're going to come up and grab uh, Incapacitate for more damage against Stunned. Our Glyph Choice is going to be Control, one of the best ones for the Wizard or Sorceress. You do increase crowd control, control damage and then do even more against them if they are chilled, stunned, etc. Then we're going to come all the way up and grab Paralyzing for more damage and mana against Stunned Enemies. Then on this side, we're grabbing Overwhelming, more damage against Stunned and Elites. For our fifth board, or fourth board, wait, one, two, three, four, yeah, for our fifth board, we're grabbing Burning Instinct. We're not taking that, but we are going to come up and grab Safeguard for damage reduction in armor. However, if you still feel like you're, like, okay and you're not super squishy, you can take all the points out of this and we can put them somewhere else. You could probably take them and come down and grab Fidget Fate if you want more lucky hit chance. Down, our glyph of choice is going to be destruction. This is huge for the sorcerer now because of the update patch. It used to be that critical strike damage only affected your core skills, but now it affects damage from all skills. So this is going to be a main glyph for the sorcerer, so make sure to get this one. We're coming down and grabbing smoldering embers because damage reduction is really good. All the way over to color, which is going to give us... Uh, attack speed, you're not really doing it for the lucky hit. It's more or less for the attack speed here to be able to spam attacks. Then we're going to come down on our sixth board, which is going to be Searing Heat. We're not actually taking. We're going to grab uh, Exploit for vulnerable damage. Uh, you could come up and grab some of these other nodes, which would be cool, but they're not really. Then we're going to grab Combustion for more fire damage and critical strike damage. So that is the Glyphs, guys. Our enchantment slots are going to be firebolt because everything needs to be burning which really helps us in a lot of our nodes and then i opted for ball lightning here ball lightning on in the enchantment slot is crackling energy periodically damages enemies surrounding when picked up you don't necessarily have to have this one another really good choice is going to be chain lightning uh you could also you could just rock this and chain lightning is really really good all it does is it, it allows you to just like critically strike and generate more crackling energy which could be cool um it but the enchantment slot is chain lightning forms automatically after spending 100 mana it's okay you're kind of back and forth you could also use the teleport you could definitely use arc lash when you use a cooldown enemies stunned around you for 0.5 seconds like that's cool but i opted for ball lightning because i think it's just the most consistent for the build on a lucky hit you have a chance to spawn um uh, a static ball lightning so it's pretty cool it just gives you an extra one 
Uh, but that is the enchantment slots for the build, guys. So the reason that we have Chain Lightning here is because when we do our Unstable Currents, it casts a random core conjuration or mastery skill. So our core skill is that, is um, Chain Lightning. Our conjuration skill would be Lightning Spear. And then our mastery, of course, is Ball Lightning. So if you really, really wanted to in your skill tree, what you could do is come down and drop a point out of this and just put a point into here just to have it. But you don't actually need this. So I keep my defenses up. But yeah, guys, that is Ball Lightning. Like the video. Let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments below. Uh, we're still working on a few of the items here. Like there's still some really good stuff. Like I have some more increased damage here. Um, if I swap the boots, but um, you can kind of play around with this. There's a lot of options here. It's not fully optimized, but so there's some really good things um, about this build. But comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe if you guys are new. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.